Welcome back to another video. If you're new here, hello, my name is Danny. I love talking about handbags. I talk about luxury handbags, contemporary brand handbags. If you like that kind of content, certainly do subscribe, turn on notifications because I'd love to have you back over and over again. The tag topic is called my FOMO per Hey guys, just jumping in here to explain something so that the video makes sense. So I mentioned in one of my recent videos that I was in the process of moving and I'm now in my new place already and I'm super excited to get it ready to start filming again in a new space. I wanted to let you know that I had batch filmed a whole number of videos in preparation for the move so that I could publish them but the move just got too busy and I didn't have time to edit. Those videos that I filmed are still pretty good and I still want to edit and publish them for you guys to watch but just bear in mind when you watch these videos they were intended to go out in December 2023. So when I talk about time frames and prices just picture that you are in December 2023 and then uh, the video will make a bit more sense. All right I hope you enjoy the video. Purchases and this tag topic is so old I think it was created over a year ago by Tess Lux and I just felt that the topic was so good I couldn't let it go. I was tagged by Jesuit Lou as well as Jane Church. Thank you so much ladies for tagging me and I've left their videos in the description box below. There were a number of questions that we were meant to answer. So there were five questions and they are what piece did I buy and what was the driving force behind me purchasing it? Did I pay over or under retail and how does it compare to the price increase? Do I still own a bag? Why or why not? Now, I'm just going to quickly say that yes, I still own every single purchase and I'll be able to show you all of them in this video today. I am pretty bad at selling things anyway. And the last question is, do I regret any of these purchases? Right, let's get started. All right, you just had to go and get all of them. Got a few bags and boxes over here. I think if you have followed my channel, you can guess what I'm going to show you and they are none other than mini pochettes. Ah, for a while mini pochettes were so hard to get and every luxury youtuber was like ah see this is my mini pochettes they're really hard to get and you have to order it from Louis Vuitton you have to go on a wait list pre-order blah 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 <laughs> and then if you ever see one in store you better snap it up. So they were really hard to get they're not so hard to get anymore but when they were hard to get I bought them whenever I could. This is one of the classic ones. It's the one in Damir Aben canvas. It's got the gold hardware. Now I do have a chain strap but that's tucked into the mini pochette at the moment so that it doesn't get stuck on my stuff. I find that really really annoying. I um, use this mini pochette as a wallet. This is the only mini pochette that I use all the time. I love the Dummy Event print. It's very durable and carefree. I don't have to worry about it. Now, in terms of the other mini pochettes that I got, in no particular order, I'm just going to pull them out. This one over here, this one I bought pre-loved from one of my lovely viewers. I absolutely love it. This was the limited edition print that I, you know, deep down inside really wanted. And in the end, it was the last mini pochette that I actually got, I guess. I found my mini pochette piece once I added this one. This is Vivian on a Ferris wheel. I really like the part circle of the Ferris wheel. I just like round things, you know, geometry of things. This one is from 2020 and it has a very lovely pink interior and a matching leather tab to go with it as well. And this print is on the Damia Ben um, canvas. Next one, which one is in this box? Another Christmas limited edition one. This one is Vivian in Coochville. Don't you love that sound? Oh, love it. What year is this from? This one is from 2019. So Vivian is in a cable car. That's what I would call it. Oh, no, it's a, I think they called it a gondola. And it's printed on a monogram canvas. On the inside, beautiful fuchsia colour to match the leather tab as well as the colour of the gondola over there. So super cute. Next one is this piece over here, another limited edition Christmas one um, from 2020. So this is Vivian on a roller coaster and the print is against the monogram canvas. Beautiful pink interior and the leather pull tab in pink as well. This was my first mini pochette ever. I was so, so excited to receive it. This is probably the only Christmas edition mini pochette that I have actually used. I've double bagged it um, when I carry a larger bag and it's really purely for decoration. It doesn't carry my phone so yeah actually now that I have an iPhone 13 mini it'll probably fit in but it probably wouldn't carry anything else. Maybe I can one day 
double up the mini pochettes and do like a, a multi mini pochette moment, huh? This is the next mini pochette I'm going to show you. Oh, I know this one was not everyone's taste when it came out. This is the bicolor mini pochette. This one is in the blue color and it was from the 2021 Valentine's Day collection. It is in Verney leather and I personally still think it's very pretty. Um, it's actually quite Barbie core. I should have talked about it during that time when it was trendy, but I didn't think of doing that. It's a very pretty blue. I find on camera sometimes it looks a bit intense, um, but in person it's quite, like, yeah, it's quite, quite a pretty blue. On the inside, it's a pretty Barbie pink or like a bubblegum kind of pink, but it doesn't have a pink pull tab. It's got a blue one to match the rest of the bag. I have only worn this out once. I did say I bought a lot of mini pochettes. This is my last one and the sixth one. I think this one was a very popular one. Some people could get their hands on it, some people couldn't. This one is in rose gold. And from memory, this is from 2020. This is in Verney leather, it's got the rose gold leather and the piping is in the monogram canvas. It's very pretty. The inside is a matching pink to the outside. What I'm actually noticing right now that I have all the mini pochettes out at one time. These two Verney ones, the chain on the Verney one is actually much thicker than the ones on the canvas. So yeah, I was quite surprised to discover this. It's probably going to be really hard to tell on camera, but when you feel it, the difference is ever so slightly palpable. These two were the only ones that I bought directly from store. Um, all the other ones that I've shown you in the canvas, I purchased pre-loved. Out of all the mini pochettes that I own, this one is the most expensive one. For this one over here, in January 2022, I paid $11.60 Australian dollars. If I look at the current Louis Vuitton website, um, a limited edition mini pochette so say the on prompt leather one is 13.30 Australian dollars. So yeah, the price has definitely gone up. If I look at another whew, uh, limited edition mini pochette, the Yayoi Kusama one is 16.30. So they've really priced that one at a premium. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> this one over here in December 2021. Yep, I paid. 980 Australian dollars. With the first mini pochette that I purchased, this one over here, I did pay a slight premium for the price at the time. So that time when I bought this, I paid 790 Australian dollars when it was retailing for 785 in store. Sure, I did pay a premium for it compared to its original retail price because this was from 2019. So in 2019, the mini pochettes didn't cost that much. And I'm pretty sure I purchased this in 2021. This one I purchased secondhand from a Japanese eBay seller. And from memory, I paid about 670 Australian dollars for this. Again, it was pre-loved. So this specific piece currently at Louis Vuitton is 11.20. So, you know, I did pay a lot less back then compared to what it was now. And even when I bought it pre-loved back then, it was um, also cheaper than the retail price for that time. And if we want to compare the Christmas limited editions, um, this one I got a really good price. My viewer was so kind and they sold this piece to me for the European retail price that they got it for. I don't remember how much it was, but they didn't charge me a premium at all and it was so lovely of them. So I paid the retail price that they paid for and also uh, DHL shipping. This one... I'm trying to recall, but I feel like it, it might be about 870 Australian dollars. This one I paid 790. And if we compare to current prices, so the 2023 mini pochette from the, the Christmas limited edition is 1220. I did pay a lot less compared to what the prices are currently. I did mention in my video talking about the Christmas animation pieces that there's actually been a price decrease by Louis Vuitton with their Christmas animation mini pochettes. So last year's mini pochettes from 2022 was 1230 Australian dollars and this year's mini pochettes are 1220 Australian dollars. So 10 Australian dollars cheaper. So yeah, um, I just thought that was interesting. In terms of the story behind this, uh, what drove me to buy them? So they were really limited edition and as a luxury lover, I felt like I wanted one for my own collection or at least one. And the price increases did also encourage me to buy so many because 
Sometimes when I want something, I just justify it in my head as a good investment. I'm like, well, the prices are going to go up, so you might as well stock up on a few. And maybe in 10, 20 years time, you can sell them on for a profit. But sometimes that's really my just my own way of trying to justify my spending, which you know I don't encourage and I do not condone, but just being transparent over here. I first became interested in getting mini pochettes in 2019. And back then, as I said before, it was really hard to get your hands on mini pochettes because Louis Vuitton didn't make many at all. Back then, the prices were also much better. I remember around August 2019, I asked for my SA to try and get me a mini pochette or at least to put me on the wait list to call me uh, if one turned up in store and if I could buy it to let me know. And I was trying to be patient. I waited, got the prices here. When I was on the wait list, it was 545 Australian dollars for a classic mini pochette, one like this. And then suddenly it had a 44% price increase. So it went from 545 Australian dollars to 785 Australian dollars in a single price increase. Oh my gosh. At that point, I felt like I couldn't sit back and wait, and that's why I ended up buying this one. <laughs> I also sort of partly justified it because it was a period of time where micro bags were really on trend, and mini pochettes were cheaper than micro bags. So I attached a long strap and converted it to a micro bag. Now that you know the pandemic is over, fewer people are using micro bags. You know, they still exist, but because our days are getting longer, our days out of the house is getting longer, we tend to carry more things. So, me at least. So, I'm having to carry larger bags again. So, I don't really have much use for such small pouches anymore. I kind of just collect them. So, the question of do I regret purchasing them? Um, I do wish I didn't buy so many, but I kind of went out of order. So, this was the first piece that I got but it wasn't the ultimate piece that I wanted. The ultimate piece that I wanted was this one over here, as I showed you before, and it ended up being the last one that I got. And once I acquired this one, I stopped to buy mini pochettes. Oh, it's raining mini pochettes over here. So in what order did I get them? I got this one. I got this one first, and then uh, I probably got this one second, and then I got the two Verney ones, which I've put away, and then I got my classic Damier Eben one, and then finally, I got this one. Ideally, my curated collection will be this one over here, uh, a classic Damier Ben one, and then um, the two Verney ones. If I had those four, you know, I'd be happy with that. Do I regret? For the moment, I don't. The price increases haven't been as aggressive as they used to be, but the prices are so high now, and I'm just glad that I have these six in my collection. I can't foresee myself buying another mini pochette in the foreseeable future. I assume you're all mini pochetted out. So leaving the SLGs or leaving the mini pochettes, I have something from Chanel. Here she is, you may have guessed, my Chanel Square Mini. So this is the Chanel Square Mini and this one is in caviar leather. The colour is charcoal and she comes with ruthenium hardware. Oh, this was really such an impulse slash formal purchase. I kind of always knew that I wanted this bag but it was impossible to find and when I wasn't really looking too hard for it and that's when she presented herself to me. It was around the time when again the mini bags were really on trend. The mini micro bags were really on trend and I was on a real kick to collect mini bags because I owned you know small to medium sized bags. This bag in general is really hard to get anyway and this is because Chanel discontinued the caviar minis in 2017. Other than one season when they did release the rectangular mini again in caviar. Since 2017, all of Chanel's minis have been in lambskin. You know, a lot of us love the caviar leather because it's meant to be a bit more durable uh, compared to the lambskin. So this bag was on my wish list for a while. And it's not that I couldn't find them, but they were all at ridiculous prices. They were at like $10,000 or even $20,000 that I saw back then on the pre-loved market. It was absolutely ridiculous. So this was around 2019 when I was shopping for it. And then one fine day, this bag presented itself to me for under 6000 Australian dollars. And I was like, what? What? Like, I could not believe the price and the fact that it was in black leather as well. Also from a legitimate seller, although this person was on eBay, they actually had a shop in Paran in Melbourne. Uh, and Paran's a really nice suburb in Melbourne, if you don't know, Melbourne, Australia. 
So I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't have funds allocated for it, but I ended up then, you know, mobilizing some of my funds to quickly pay for this bag. And that's how I got it. So as you can see, I still own this bag. In terms of how much it compares to the current price, this bag doesn't exist anymore. So does that make it uh, priceless? <laughs> um, in any case, as I said, I paid under 6,000 Australian dollars for it in 2020, in early 2020. Back then, the bag already did not exist, but I'm sure I already paid a premium on top of the 2017 price. Having said that, it was a good price compared to other Square Caviar Minis that were going for like 10,000. Do I regret it? No, I don't use this bag much because she doesn't fit a lot, but I actually really, really love her. So the next bag that I have on the list, I know I said at the start of the video that all the bags that I bought out of FOMO I have in my possession. Turns out I told a lie. So I actually don't have this bag anymore. And it is the Louis Vuitton X Yayo Kusama Pumpkin Speedy 20. I had that bag in my possession only for a very short while. I was really pleased when I opened it up. I love the bag. I love the silk screen. I love the little pumpkins on it. Um, I even had a matching bag charm, which I still have. Uh, during the unboxing, I did notice some um, defects on the bag, so there were some dents on the chaps of the Pumpkin Speedy 20. I contacted my SA after that to ask her if it was normal. She checked with repairs and they came back and said no, that's a defect. So there was no way I was going to keep a defective bag. I bought that bag because I was actually very excited about the Yayoi Kusama collection. I just felt like it was a very highly anticipated collection and highly regarded collection by Louis Vuitton. And Yayoi Kusama being someone, being an artist who's really elderly, if you wanted something from her collection, this is the time to buy it. And I didn't want to buy a pre-loved limited edition collection because there's a chance that there'll be a markup. That's why I wanted to go via the boutique route and I did go ahead and do that but unfortunately my bag did not turn out um, to be good <laughs> so I had to return it. I tried to reorder it again at some stage but all the stock was gone. I'm a little bit annoyed by it. I've talked about it in other videos so I won't harp on about it but that was one bag that I bought out of FOMO and in the end got away from me anyway. That bag, how much was it? So the Yayoi Kusama Pumpkin Speedy 20, from memory I paid $37.50 Australian dollars for it. If I look at the current price, the Canvas Speedy 20 is $33.50 but if I look at a limited edition Speedy 20 with the Monoglam collection, that's $36.50. Because the Yayo Kusama collection was marked up anyway, there was a premium on that collection. As I said, price of $37.50 is still more expensive than some of the Speedy 20s that are currently on the website. Having said that, the Yayo Kusama collection has also been subject to some price increases since I purchased it. So if I still possess the bag and had purchased it for $37.50, the current uh, estimated retail price would be higher today. Anyway, I don't have the bag. I wish I took it out at least once. But I didn't. <laughs> the next bag I bought out of FOMO is from Coach. Let me pull her out. Da -da -da -da. The Coach Swinger in Shearling material. Um, I did purchase this bag out of FOMO. Oh, um, I really love this shearling. I thought it was so cute. Coach did a collaboration with Jennifer Lopez. They came out with the non later 19. So they're very similar to the mini pochettes. Um, 19 centimeters in length but with this material. There was a real craze for that collaboration with Jennifer Lopez in the US, but I couldn't get that in Australia. You know, it's just really hard to get coach in Australia with some of the very special pieces or some of the collaborations. And then this one turned up in Australia. So I was like circling it. It was on the Australian website, but I was trying really hard to be good. I did not buy it straight away. I ended up going into the coach store at David Jones looking at it in person it was actually summertime i remember it like it was probably like the 28th of december or something like that really hot in australia i checked it out and i managed to leave david jones empty-handed i resisted and i didn't buy it but man i lost sleep for like three nights and i'm like this is just silly this is just ridiculous on top of that it was about 30 percent off so i think it was 585 Australian dollars. Because I couldn't sleep, I just went back into the David Jones store and uh, purchased it. I remember the sales associate was like, um, I didn't expect anyone to buy this bag in this heat, but there I was. I went ahead and bought it. 
I also bought it because I love that it reminded me of the Fendi shearling. It's really cozy. I've used it probably twice and I've really enjoyed it. How much would it compare today? This bag doesn't exist today anymore. And I think that is the theme with what I've got. Most of the things that I got because of FOMO is, was because it was limited edition. I'll just check how much a regular swinger is. Okay, so a coach swinger bag in leather retails for $4.95 Australian dollars. But you can purchase it from the Iconic at $3.95 or $3.09. The swingers do tend to go on sale. Um, but I guess this is a limited edition one in shearling. They generally are more expensive than the leather ones anyway. That's just to give you an idea in terms of current retail price. But they're not really comparable due to the material that it's made of. Do I regret it? Absolutely not. This is my only shearling bag in my collection. And I still really like how that CC monogram is printed onto the shearling. It looks really subtle. You can see it there. You can tell it's coach if you know. But if you don't know and you don't really look carefully, it's a really sort of neutral colorway um, and just a very interesting sort of circular pattern printed onto the shearling. Up next is my Chanel Classic Flat. This is in the medium size. It's in caviar leather and the color is deep burgundy with silver hardware. Uh, yeah, this was totally a formal purchase. But again, being on my wish list for a very long time, it's technically one of my holy grail bags. Wanted it for years, just been waiting for the correct opportunity and the correct one to come along. I've wanted this bag since 2020. When I first had the opportunity to purchase it, I was in Melbourne. It was immediately before the pandemic. It was February 2020. I was in the Chanel store. At that time, I wanted a small or medium classic flat in caviar with gold hardware but they only had black caviar with silver hardware so I left the store and I ended up buying my other holy grail bag which is my Lady Dior. So in 2020 I did not buy that bag. I have a vague memory that the retail price at the time was 7,800 Australian dollars I believe and then of course we know all about the crazy Chanel price increases. The Chanel Classic Flap currently is 16,200 Australian dollars. In terms of this one, I purchased it uh, at the start, sorry, at the end of 2022, I think in November, and I purchased this pre-loved from a consignment store called, I want to say Royal Bag Spa, but it's not. It's the one that's affiliated. Um, I'll put their name on screen. And I paid $8,700 for this bag. When I purchased it, the Chanel Classic Flat was about $14,000. I paid a lot cheaper than the retail price at the time. And certainly $8,700 is like, you know, half the current retail price. So yeah, I did pay a lot less compared to its current retail price. Do I regret it? No, I still have it. Um, I intend to keep it for a long time. I've used it probably just a couple of times. Um, it is a little bit small and I guess a bit expensive for everyday use, so I, I don't use it all the time, but super happy that she's in my collection. If you're interested in the unboxing video, I have left it in the description box below. Over time, I did say initially that I preferred gold hardware, but over time I realized that if I'm going to get like a newer Chanel classic flap or newer or any newer Chanel bag, and if I want it to last, I should go for silver hardware because Chanel's gold tone hardware is going to fade. Um, so yeah, it's safest to go with silver. And the last two are my Hermes bags. Um, so here are my Birkin 25 and this is my Kelly 32. I'll talk about my Kelly first because I purchased her first. So this is my Kelly 32. She is in Clemence leather. The color is Rose Jaipur and she comes with gold hardware. There is a long shoulder strap that I have kept in the bag and I'm not going to take it out just because I'm in a bit of a hurry. I actually have to go and get my daughter relatively soon. So this bag I purchased in 2020, I would say 2020, from the Purse Affair, which is a consignment store in Melbourne. And again, this was such a formal purchase. I was thinking that I really wanted um, a Kelly 25, but the prices were just absolutely ridiculous at the time. And then this one turned up. I really liked the color and the price was okay. It was $14,000 from the Purse Affair. I felt like, okay, that price is okay for an Hermes bag. I was happy to give it a go. Again, came up with an excuse. I wouldn't encourage this, but 
just letting you know, this is what I said to myself. I said, look, the small bags are trendy at the moment. Go and get yourself a big bag. And when the big bag trend comes back, if you don't want this bag, you can go ahead and sell it or trade it for the Kelly 25. I did buy the Hermes Kelly out of FOMO. I do really love this bag. Now, do I think I'm going to sell it? I mean, the thought of myself not having this bag in this collection, yeah, I it, it doesn't make me feel that good. <laughs> so I think I probably won't ever sell this bag. I don't know, we'll see. But that's just how I feel at the moment. I don't regret buying it, of course. I do use her sometimes when I'm on my own. And I do really enjoy carrying her when I'm by myself or, you know, when I'm when I haven't got my daughter with me. So when I purchased her, it was out of, you know, just wanting to have an Hermes bag or at least a, a Kelly. My preference between the Birkin and the Kelly is the Kelly. So I really just wanted to have a Kelly bag. And um, this was the one that I added to my collection. How much did it compare in terms of retail price? I think it was approximately equivalent. It might have been a little bit lower. The Kelly 32s in Clemence leather might have been around 14 to $15,000 retail anyway. So I would say I bought it in really good condition close to the recommended retail price at the time. I think this bag was from about 2015. I assume in 2015, this bag would have cost less than $14,000. But when I purchased it in 2020, it was about equivalent to the retail price. I think it was a real win because I didn't have to build up a purchase history with Hermes. Having said that, because the smaller Kelly bags are more popular, so the Kelly 32 were less popular. I think it was potentially still easier to get this in boutique. I don't know. The thing is, when you talk about Hermes, you can spend hours debating which route is better. So let's just not go there. <laughs> and then my Birkin 25, which was the ultimate formal bag. Firstly, because it was so expensive. So this is my Birkin 25. She is in Togo leather. The color is geranium and she comes with gold hardware. I purchased this from an online consigner, Finkelpuff, who's based in Singapore. I paid um, under $24,000 for this bag. Like in my mind, I always wanted a Birkin 25. It was only about when I was going to purchase it. The thing is because Chanel was doing these crazy price increases and Hermes had also announced a price increase for early 2023, I was so worried that the Birkin 25 prices were just going to go even higher. So I just one day said, look, I'm just going to buy a Birkin 25 and that's it. Let's not think about it too much more because I will not be able to stomach prices any higher than what they were when I purchased them. So I bought this in May last year. So May 2022 was when I acquired this bag and I paid under $24,000 for it. The bag is in really good condition and she's in Togo leather, which is one of the more desirable leathers from Ares because they're meant to be easier to spa. And I really like mine because I don't have a lot of veining on the bag. Some people like the veining, but I'm not a fan of the veining. So I like that I don't have the veining. That was one of my criteria. At that time, $24,000 was on the lower end of Birkin 25 resale prices. Um, Fingerpuff, because she's based online, her prices are generally more competitive anyway compared to if you say purchase from the Purse Affair where I got my Kelly 32 or any other brick and mortar store. In that sense, I paid an okay price for this bag. Of course, the retail price is a lot less because with the Birkin 25s, you always have to pay a premium for them. I think the Birkin 25s are somewhere around $16,000 at the moment. So I still paid on top of that. But we have to take into account that I did not have to build a purchase history. So in that sense, I feel like it's hard to debate whether I saved money or not. In my mind, I did. Of course, that's what I'm going to say. But, you know, <laughs> the question of do I regret it? Uh, no, no, I do not regret it. I'm very grateful to have this bag in my collection. Having said that, in terms of prices, if I waited a little bit, I would have gotten a better price. In 2023, not a lot of people were shopping and the resale market went down. Observing the prices on Fingerpuff's Instagram, the prices have, got, have gotten a little bit cheaper. The stress for me is over. It was something I had to do at the time just to settle myself and to settle my FOMO and that's done and dusted and I'm glad about that. So let's just leave it at that. I do not regret it. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Let me know what bags have you purchased from FOMO. I'm going to revive this tag and I'm going to tag a number of you in the description box below. Do check it out to see if you've been tagged or not. Certainly if I haven't tagged you but you haven't done this tag video, I feel like this topic is so good. So please do so. And if you do the video, please tag me as well because I'd love to watch your video. I'm just going to have a closer look at her.